Good morning, folks. I'm sorry I'm late. It was a very long night. Why are we looking at the folks from Armageddon here? Well, it's the chosen photo of Dr. Circus on a Fukushima article called No One Is Watching. Well, sir, the observers are, and this came across our forum yesterday. For the rest of you, we all knew it was a matter of time before we had to roll up our sleeves and go do a more complete Fukushima cleanup. But this article explains why it could be as dangerous as the initial event. I've also linked the Fairwinds page if you don't have it. Arnie Gunderson agrees this could be disastrous. Another good article here that'll flesh out what I've been discussing when talking about underside ice melting belied by record surface ice recoveries two years in a row. Kicking over to the RSOE, where giant waves pummel the Philippine coastal towns here and ruin dozens of homes. There are three buoys in event mode nearby. These have indeed been showing deviations for more than a day. There is not yet any earthquakes to match those readings. It's that time of year when conditions funnel moisture off the African coastline, and the big question is not if it will flood, but how bad. I've seen photos of women carrying babies on their heads up to their necks in water themselves. China being impacted by Typhoon Fito, and right behind is an even more powerful storm tracking on the same path, but which is still expected to crank north and northeast over Japan. Low in Europe lost its power as the northern areas now have the best chance for storms along that convergence line, with the exception of course of the regular Mediterranean pop-up storms. South Island of New Zealand welcoming the bell of the ball, the Australian east coast having a light chance of showers and Perth is on deck again. Most of the US will be nice today, a bit chillier, but nice. The low and storm zone along the convergence has moved eastward and will extend north across the border into Canada tonight. The sun has been quiet as can be, we know this. Brief upticks is all we get every few weeks and as the new active regions show themselves on the disk, the sun appears to be trying to wake up. Numerous small eruptions, with one of them being directly Earth-facing, according to both NASA and NOAA's endless spirals. Satellites are unhelpful. Flaring is not where it should be, but hey, that's a start. Let's quickly look at some of these new sunspots. The central grouping looks so unimpressive but has indeed been the brains of this uptick so far. The trailing development over on the left does look promising, but not yet able to affect Earth until they turn in and face us some more. Looking at the solar wind, the call yesterday morning was to watch for a minor, minor interplanetary shock with the real readings coming on the more sensitive readers. Well, I think I see that shock right after the new day began UTC, and you can correlate that with the breaks in the nice magnetometer and electron flux curves. Either way, still very minor, no geomagnetic instability. Left side of this coronal hole power chart faces Earth, and the power is moderate only. Now the far right of this chart can actually be seen on the Earth-facing disk, but on the far left side turning in. That's the one that's got some power. Biggest quakes of the day weren't much to write home about. The West Chile Rise uptick is perhaps the largest call for caution. Coronal holes still facing Earth today, weak as they are, with a stronger one coming in from the left. Still got plasma filaments posing eruption threat along with the returning flare potential. Still fixing website vulnerability but limited access may be had at various points throughout the day. Thanks for your patience and eyes open. No fear, it's 8.15am Eastern Time and that's the news. Be safe everyone.